and we'll send the packet virtually over to her. It's already on top of it. Thank you. Um, all right, we're off to reports and comments. I'm looking out at the audience today. I'm not seeing any. Uh, are you reading your roll call? Yes. Okay. It was a long night last night. I had a little bit of a late start. Okay. Um, we have no roll officers with us today. Moving on to public comments. We have a member of the public wishing to make comment. Seeing none. Uh, fiscal and contractual. We have no repository for offering. We have no advertising for business proposal. We have no receipt of business proposal. We do have a number of warrant registers. Um, dated November 22nd, November 21st, November 17th, November 15th, and November 14th. I'll give my colleagues probably more than a minute to check those Thank over. You. And then I'll take a motion to uh, accept and file a warrant register just because of the volume that we're going through. But the warrant register process is, is the culmination of the county's fiscal process. How that process works is um, we set the budget, which we're actually going to do uh, next week, um, with different line items. So, for example, commissioners, materials, and supplies might have 500 bucks allocated to it. Um, from there, individuals in the departments under those uh, um, under those budget areas are able to submit a purchase order to the Board of Commissioners for our consideration. Um, first, that purchase order goes down for buying staples or a chair or whatever. Goes down to the controller's office. Controller signs off on it that there is money in the budget that can be used on that expenditure. That comes up to our office, signed off on by two commissioners. Goes back down to the controller's office. The controller authorizes it be paid out. The treasurer then pays it out. So it's a big checks and balances system. Um, after it's paid out, controller's office compiles what looks like this, which is a warrant register of everything that has been paid out. We check it over, make sure that there hasn't been anything paid that we haven't authorized or things that we have authorized that haven't been paid. Um, approve it. Very, very large uh, uh, checks and balances. Make sure that all public dollars are, are, are very well accounted for. And some pages we can skip through because we know the processes. We know that certain warrant registers will have the, the um, foster families and kinship families where we know that their amounts are there that they could pay for monthly and things like that. Or, or attorneys, the, the contract attorneys and things like that. So just in case I, if someone noticed me flipping through quickly, I know what they are going through them. If you notice me not going through, I look through them for them. Yeah. <laughs> So I will motion to approve the warrant registers. Second. The motion is second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, question on motion. All in favor, please say like saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Next up is minutes from Tuesday, November 15th, the last public meeting. Uh, and again, I'll give my colleagues a bit of check those out. take a motion to uh, approve the minutes or make any changes as necessary to you. I, I noticed something, and I, I have a feeling you'll be able to resolve it. Under general public comments, mm -hmm. Should that be Vaughn, Vaughn Creasy with yes. a V, not Ron? Uh, that's what I thought. Thank you. I'll make that change. Yes. Excellent program. Yes. And I will move to accept those in the minutes. November is always a little bit of an odd month for us. We all we missed two meetings, one for the, one for the election and then one for a county commissioner's conference. So the minutes are usually a little more lengthy because we're condensing a month's worth of business into two meetings. I'll second uh, Commissioner Spielvogel's motion. The motion is second. for discussion, hearing none, question the motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, motion carries. Um, we have two written communications today. One is for who contributed to this project. Um, the Graceland Road bridge replacement from the Shannon Township. One is for MPDES permit notification for the uh, airport uh, terminal building. Um, airport terminal submitted by RIA and Graceland Road submitted by SACS. So we think that we did it together, both right. Um, I'll note, as I always do, under state law, um, when different development activities take place in Lawrence County, um, the entities which are taking which are doing those development activities um, are required to notify the board of commissioners if, um, you know, for example, the MPDES permit, um, which is an erosion and sediment control permit, um, 
those activities are taking place within the county. Make sure we're caught up to speed on everything uh, that's taking place. Uh, that being said, we don't have approval authority over whether or not they get those permits, um, which is required to be notified. So I'll take a motion to accept and file the uh, written correspondence. Is there any comments or questions on Second, with a, just a quick comment, I may have mentioned this earlier, but I, I recall from my days as a township supervisor that uh, this bridge on Graceland Road is the only bridge that is owned and maintained by Neshannock Township. It's the only one in the entire township. The bridge on King's That's Chapel. That's surprising. Yeah, it is. Yeah. When you stop and think about it, the, the bridge on King's Chapel Road that goes over 376, mm -hmm. that's owned by PennDOT. Even though King's Chapel Road is a township road, that bridge is a PennDOT bridge. And you stop and think there really there aren't that many other bridges no. No. Uh, in the Shannock Township. This is the only one. So, anyway, anyway, they're good for the next 20 years then. <laughs> Glad to help them, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're done. And the Shannock Bridge is good shape. Yeah. So again, I'll, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Uh, motion secondly for discussion hearing none question of motion. All in favor, please come vote saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Staff reports. We have a member of staff that has anything to report above and beyond the party on the agenda. Seeing none. Mr. Reports and comments. Dan, you're on deck first today. Um, at, at this time, I don't believe I have, uh, I'm just looking at my calendar, but no, I don't believe I have anything to report today. Thank you. Absolutely. Loretta? Other than uh, CCAP last week, it's always a, um, a learning experience when just, I don't know whether it's just because it's our first term that we're new, but there's always something to learn and additional information that you can gather. So it, it was a, uh, once again, a good conference. Yeah. That's it. Moving into December, it's just unbelievable. Where did November go? On Christmas. And uh, we're, there it is, right around the back. I hear it too. You hear the music playing everywhere. Oh, uh, yes. I can't turn yes. on. You can't no, turn on the radio. No, mm -mm. You cannot. What? You cannot. Um, all right. Another thing, I have two things to mention. Number one, I'm, I'm putting the finishing touches on the uh, on the preliminary budget for presentation next week. Um, what originally was a four million dollar deficit, we successfully worked down to about a one million dollar deficit. Still plugging away to, to to fill that gap, um, and hopefully by the time we get it uh, out to the public. On the uh, on the sixth, that gap will be plugged. Um, on top of that, and this relates to our COVID funding, a number of counties, actually pretty much every county at this point, is undergoing significant studies and significant um, uh, activities related to broadband expansion across um, across the counties. Um, Washington County actually just uh, introduced a fifty million dollar initiative to uh, uh, to expand rural broadband access all throughout pretty much the southern portion of Washington mm -hmm. County. Beaver County just announced a twenty million dollar initiative. All those are backed up with uh, planning modules uh, that were put together by different consulting firms, um, but that identify target areas where broadband needs to be um, needs to be placed, which then they're able to use to go to um, go to broadband companies, Armstrong, uh, uh, you know, Duquesne uh, Electric, the Duquesne Light, whichever one does the broadband, and say, hey, we need these areas taken care of. We have we have a study that shows we didn't take care of. Would you be willing to come in if we can go get federal funding? You go to the Fed, show them the study, says, hey. We need some broadband access here, and the feds pay for half, and the county pays for half. That's generally how those those projects work. Um, so that being said, we got RF, we sent RFPs. We got one proposal back um, for a Lawrence County broadband program. Um, it was going to be two months ago. Um, it was way way too high for for our liking. Um, I, it was like two million dollars. Yes. Um, I met with the the uh, the individual. Uh, the principal in charge of the of the, um, of the of broadband, Michael Baker's broadband arm. Um, we worked that price down to uh, two hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars. Oh, interesting. That can be paid for out of the American. Well, we cut off some yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> two hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars that can be paid for out of uh, our American Rescue Plan funding. Um, so we'll be bringing that forward um, most likely next week. Amy, I'll send I'll send it down to you before we we do officially bring it forward. I'd like to get your sign off on it too. Um, before uh, before we you know go into entering the contract with broadband firm, so that's all I have. Very good. Um, and now we'll move on to the uh, resolution portion of the circus. First up, we have uh, planning an LCSS resolution for discussion and possible approval to enter into an agreement uh, with LCSS for the team program and to facilitate the county's renovation project for the family wellness program located on 1745 Fru Middle Road. For context, this is the uh, competitive CDBG funding that we received 
notification of I want to send it two weeks ago. Um, so Amy, uh, the planning director of uh, the Kitty, what do we have? Uh, what do we have going on here? So yeah, just so you stuff, it is um, kind of a community development block grant discretionary funds. C D three of our third round. Um, LCAP approached the, the county, asked if they would be able to apply for these funds. Um, the county would apply on their behalf. They, are, they will be the ones who will be administering the program. One of the items, which is the public services, is just a continuation of our CDBG CD um, one, which is the teens program, temporary emergency assistance skills program. Um, Jen wanted to be able to finish out um, until next June, as we require for some additional funding, which is a little over hundred thousand dollars, which we received for public services. So that's for the teen program, and then the remaining amount is a little over a million dollars, one point two for them to um, continue with their um, the re renovations right. out there, their fruit mill. Um, Jen did attach a description, it's for the housing, what's it called? Um, yeah, Family's First Housing Program is what, and she did, um, there's a two page attachment there breaking down what they were using funds for. So the, and then this, the agreement is just between the county and LCSS for them to administer those two programs, the facilities and the services. There is some administration dollars, which the county will see, our office will see a little over uh, $60,000 for administration of the program. Um, these funds all have to be spent by June of 2023. Oh, wow. Yes. Because there's construction involved. Yes. LCAP's pulled off miracles before. And I do think, I'll have to go back through my emails, I think they sent the actual, and the, the, they're, they're starting the contract. Um, I'm going to have to. Yeah, well, yeah, we don't have a contract yet. Yeah. We don't have it yet. They will backdate it, though. Jen's been working with Donna and Rico already on that. Um, we've done the environmental review, um, but now they're sending out information for who, who's going to sign off on it, and I have to get that back to them. I think they sent it Friday, Friday for Thanksgiving, too, so um, I'll get that up to you guys for signatures, and then you will be getting an email soon, then for the signatures for the, you guys to sign the contract can in, in Morgan, so. Okay. Uh, questions, comments for uh, Director McKinney? Uh, this is, uh, what is this, Vanessa? 393. 393, I'll take a motion on 393. So moved. Second, motion is seconded for discussion, hearing none, question on the motion. Yes, please call the roll. Commissioner Spielvogel? Yes. Commissioner Vogler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, actually, we have two CYS resolutions, uh, both fairly, uh, 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 it's going to take me longer to pass these. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said you wouldn't be back anyway. Well. Wow. Well. I like you included the direct image copy since we bought the thing. Yeah. Right. I didn't know how many minutes are in paper. Mike, you're good. All right. Good, Mike, you're good. We love seeing you. Uh, but no, they're, they're going to actually install that around the 15th, 16th of December, but the building ain't going to start to January. 60 months. And then the pence run is more or less, we've never used them as just a backup, mm -hmm. just in case we get in the bar. Right. You know, so, but right now we're not, you know, we're not planning on using it. Yeah, just have the system in place. Just in case, right. yeah. Question, question on the floor, I might. All right, I will take a motion to approve. Um, we'll do them both together unless anybody has the objections to that. 394 and 395. So moved. Up, see? It's, it's, it's drifting this yeah. way. I'm like, did he ask for a motion? Uh -huh. Just ask to put them together. Second. So moved. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Motion is seconded for discussion here. Can I question the motion? Can I please follow the roll? Commissioner Spielberg. Yes. Commissioner Vogler. Yes. Commissioner Boyd. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank Mike. you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Up next, um, we have a resolution for discussion possible fruit allocate $15,000 out of liquid fuels. Uh, to Slippery Rock Township for a load bearing study on Rose Point Bridge. Um, we just generally in our duties, we meet with the townships quite frequently, the boroughs quite frequently, the city quite frequently. Um, I remember a year ago we, we sat down with Slippery Rock Township supervisors and you know, questions what are, what are your priorities of the township? What do you need help with? How can we provide assistance? What can the county do for you? Um, and one of the first things they brought up was this bridge, which has been a problem area for them now. For a while, my understanding is it's to the point where it's it, uh, are people able to walk across it. No, it's no, totally completely done. Now. Yeah, it's yep. completely blocked. Um, and so, 
maybe a month ago, we received a formal request from them um, specifically for uh, an allocation out of our liquid fuels funding um, to study the, um, or I guess this is maybe, uh, this is through Act 13, mm -hmm. looks like, so it, which is a subset of liquid fuels specifically for municipally owned bridges. Um, but looking at a study of uh, a load bearing study um, to see how we can improve that, see if we can get that transferred, see, basically look and see what the, what the options are to right. remediate the problem. Right. Right. Um, so I know it's something, this is above and beyond our normal liquid fuels mm -hmm. allocations, just because again, this is a township, this yes. is one of the township priorities, getting this bridge, um, figuring out what, what to do with this bridge. Um, so I know I'm, I'm happy to vote in favor of it. Um, questions or comments from my colleagues on this? Just that it, it does, um, with it being closed, has an adverse effect on the economic um, atmosphere in that entire area. So having to do that study, getting it done, seeing what needs to be done from remediation, dealing with the bridge, whether it just becomes a pedestrian or pedestrian light vehicle traffic or ATVs or something, it definitely needs to be done. And, and we most definitely happy to assist with, uh, with the township. That'll appease any approach and I won't have to do phone calls for them anymore. But it's always a, always a pleasure. We say that jokingly. Sunny is always a pleasure. We, the Slippery Rock uh, supervisors, all of them, they work hard collectively them. work very hard for their for their township. Yes, they do. Yes. So we are definitely happy to assist in that. Thank you guys for being here. Thank, Thank you. Here. Thanks for your yes. support. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. The, uh, I concur to Mr. and Mrs. Yeager, who own uh, Rose Point uh, Campground. Uh, this has created an issue for you folks because there is a neighboring business on the other side of the Slippery Rock Creek. And a lot of your patrons in the past have been able to walk or bicycle over to the uh, miniature golf course and ice cream stand. Right. And now with the closure of the bridge, they're precluded from being able to do that. Hopefully this study, as was mentioned by my two colleagues, hopefully this study will ultimately allow for the some type of reopening. The bridge itself is uh, a township owned bridge. It's not a county bridge, but as Mr. Boyd noted, we've been asked by the supervisors to assist them in their efforts. And as, as was noted by both commissioners, we're all willing to, to do that. And hopefully the end result will be something that is able to accommodate your patrons and the public in general, as far as access from one side of the Slippery Rock Creek to the other. Um, that, that road, which is a township road as well, uh, used to be 422. That was the main drag. It was the That's main that. road between Butler and Newcastle. And then I think in the early 50s, they That's built right. the uh, new 422. Straightened it out. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I want to I, I wanna thank uh, both Mr. and Mrs. Yeager for their interest in this and their, you know, they've had us out there earlier this year to look at it. Yes. And Supervisor Johnson was with us, Amy McKinney was with right. us. Uh, so uh, hopefully this is a step in the right direction. Well, we appreciate the attention you've given Absolutely. to the matter and the support that we're getting. So, Absolutely. Uh, and, and I realize this may not mean we open the bridge, but it means we'll know. What so the answer for it, yes. What are next steps? Yes. This is what the report says. This is what we can do. This is what we can't do. How do we proceed? So definitely glad to, to be in the system. Thank you. Thank way. you all. Sorry. All right, I'll take a motion okay. to approve uh, 396. So moved. Second. The motion is second. Is there any further discussion here? None question on the motion, but let's please call roll. Commissioner Steele, that will? Yes. Commissioner Vogler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Up next, 397. Um, just another copy release. Our copy is getting older, breaking down. We'll start to replace some of them. Um, this one's specifically for the Office of the Commissioners. Uh, I think we can all say it gets a lot of use. Yes. We're all responsible for that. Absolutely. <laughs> How the budget is uh, we're printing out budget copies next week. It's 400 pages just right there. Uh, yes. But I'll take them hopefully front and back. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, but I'll take a motion to approve uh, 397. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion here? None. Question on the motion. But that's please call the roll. Commissioner Steele Vogler? Yes. Commissioner Vogler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. 398. 
Uh, we have a resolution. This is this is for our cost allocation plan. Um, we are required. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. Sure. Um, cost allocation plan under under with our federal funding program, so the MHDS, a state, state and federal MHDS, okay. um, CYS, uh, domestics, uh, 911, uh, et cetera. We're required to have a cost allocation plan. What that basically says is there are certain services um, that are provided through the county that are federally and state funded. Um, but which county, uh, like the controller's office, for example, processes the paperwork for the human resources right. office, for example, um, you know, handles hiring, handles, uh, handles uh, uh, health care benefits, et cetera. The, we, the county's retirement fund contributes to those people's retirements. There are county employees, but they're funded most, mostly largely through state and federal streams. The cost allocation plan um, allows us to quantify um, the county general fund's contribution to those operations and allows us to offset some of the costs relating to those operations um, through state federal funds. So we're entering into agreement here with, with Susquehanna Consulting, um, who we also use their personnel, we also use for the administration of COVID funds um, for that cost allocation. Any questions, okay. comments on that? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll take a motion to approve 398. So moved. Second. The motion is second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Question of motion, Vanessa, please call the roll. Commissioner Spielvogel? Yes. Commissioner Vogler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, up next, we're moving some money to uh, Russo's maintenance and repair for uh, for some window tinting for security purposes there. Right now, if you're driving along Route 18, um, you can look right through the window. Um, and any normal business, that, that wouldn't be an issue. Uh, in the magisterial office, uh, it's better to err on the side of caution, so we're getting those windows um, mm -hmm. tinted. So any questions, comments on that? I'll take a motion to approve 390. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Question on the motion. Would that please call roll? Commissioner Steelvogel? Yes. Commissioner Vogler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Voter services. Um, this actually is coming out of our election integrity grant. It's not coming out of the voter services um, budget itself. We're just moving some money to pay for some staff uh, for some uh, poll workers. Uh, adult probation. Um, some contingency to their materials and supplies to purchase some drug tests. Courts moving money from interpreter to jurors. We've had a number of trials this year. Um, mm -hmm. We met with Josh yesterday. How many did he say? Like, no. 11. Yeah. Uh, and so as a result of that, we're seeing some increased juror payments as we, as we have more trials. Jail doing a whole bunch of stuff moving into um, contracted medical salary warden, overtime, uh, et cetera. It's getting through the end of the year, moving some stuff around there. District attorney, uh, same type of thing, just moving some money around to cover some end of year costs. Domestic relations, same thing. What, what I do is in the budget, um, I go through and trim everything down so that instead of, and then build a contingency account out. And so that instead of having a um, uh, every line item being inflated, we're able to get each individual line item down with the, with the understanding of sort of a bubble at the very end of the budget that they're able to plug and play with. Uh, but the expectation is that they that they use that well yeah. they use the contingency versus again right. inflating every line item. Uh, domestic domestic relations same thing moving some stuff around. Um, courts moving the money from interpreters over to uh, materials and supplies to get some court calendars. Uh, human resources again contingency to background drug tests. Um, we've had a lot of turnover in uh, the jail and in CYS so that they just don't right. do the regular processes. And that is what we have. Any questions on any of those trans? Just a comment and and. Uh... Your last remark about the hiring and so on. In our visit to the CCAP conference, it's it's statewide. We're, we're not the exception to the rule. Every county is struggling trying to find employees, particularly same area as us. CYS and their right. jails especially. Um, we're not alone. We're not alone. I'll take a motion to approve those transfers. Send them. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Question on the motion. Would ask please call the roll. Commissioner Spielvogel? Yes. Commissioner Vogler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next commissioner's meeting, Tuesday, December 6th at 10 a.m. in the commissioner's meeting room. And <laughs> that's like the fact that we lost the <laughs> There'll be a planning commission meeting on Wednesday, December 14th at 12 p.m. at, at Los Amigos. Uh, so All they'll right. enjoy some, some, uh, some Mexican. Um, any additional public comments this time? 
Um, hi, my name is Brian Christie. I live outside of Mahoning Town. <clears throat> I work for a company called Wi Fiber. We're a community engagement platform. Uh, we're finishing up the city of Canton and moving to Pittsburgh. I happen to live here, and I just wanted to give some information to you guys. And any problems you as a community have, we offer technology solutions based off your infrastructure. Um, right now, 18 months out in Canton, we've solved 2,000 crimes for the Canton Police Department uh, through their live crime tracker. Uh, won the ARPA award. We got two cities that we're in talks to in Pittsburgh to move into, and also Butler County. Um, we offer many solutions, and I got a little notepad, and I'll, I'll take you guys' time. Sounds good. I don't do this for a living talking to people, so I'm just kind of yeah. <laughs> So, um, the things we do, like the police department, uh, body cam offloads, cameras, trap, uh, parks is a big one lately. Out um, in Canton, people. Went on at night, um, we do motion alarms, automatic detection, speakers. Uh, and we all the object is to utilize what infrastructure you guys have now. So the big expense coming with putting this stuff in isn't an issue. I, I would suggest a couple things. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned parks, and the young lady that was here, Amy McKinney, our planning director, her office oversees couple of county parks that we own and operate. I want to talk to Amy in the planning office, which is right, right, there, right around the corner. Now, the county yes. does not have a police department per se, other than we do have the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. now, the sheriff is independent of the commissioners, but he's in our building, Sheriff uh, Harry Colero. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, with respect to other police departments, obviously city of Newcastle and a lot of our Townships and boroughs have their own police departments, but they don't fall under our jurisdiction. There is no there is no county police department. Correct. Other than the sheriff, yes. uh, who handles uh, certain aspects of, of court related matters and some law enforcement. Mm -hmm. But uh, those are two that pop into my head. Maybe you can see. Yeah. Oh yes, the district yeah. attorney. Basically, which absolutely you know. right. That's very interesting because he talked about some different things when he met with him. As far as surveillance and his office is in the old courthouse, ah, which is gotcha. which is accessible from this building. But those are the three that right. here at the county level yeah. come to my mind. Uh, we actually offer like schools, roads. Uh, we're doing the big ARPA thing out in Ohio. Uh, colleges, we've done Allegheny College up in Meadville. We personalize whatever issues you guys have, and we can come up with solutions for you guys that are cost beneficial. Ellen, with, with respect to roads, and you heard us talk about bridges today, county doesn't own any roads. Correct. Uh, we do own some bridges, but obviously uh, our municipalities own a lot of streets and roads, as yes. I'm sure you know. So it's, it's, um, it's too bad the uh, Burroughs Association and the Township Supervisors Association have kind of Before gone dormant. Right. And because right. uh, they used to meet as a group. We do have the uh, League of Municipalities, but I'm not sure they meet in January. I think we have got a lot of answers actually from, from Amy. Amy. Even yeah. one of the municipal um, um, address books, yeah. the directories, Directory. she would have one of them as well. All right. That would give you contact information for all right. 27 right. municipalities and the school districts. Right, and, and the school right. districts. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, Amy will help you out. Awesome. And again, she's right around the corner. Out here, take a look. Mm -hmm. Who was her last name? McKinney. M little C, capital K I N N E Y. All right. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All righty. Thanks. Uh, all right. I will uh, adjourn the board Thank you. Very good. <sighs> Both. Sure. Well, there's Amy right there. Oh, there you oh. go. We were just talking about you. Oh, oh McKinney. It was good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>